other side. travel through southeastern Kansas, you'll find a large rural area filled with wide open fields, cows, country homes, creeks, trees, power lines, and the occasional oh. tiny decrepit town. Or sometimes slightly larger towns like Pittsburgh or Columbus. However, within this area lies a testament to different times, a captured glimpse into what was once the lifeblood of a formerly bustling community. The depot in Corona, Kansas was used as a depot for passenger trains in the early 1940s until it was sold to be used as a hay barn and moved a quarter mile away from the tracks in the 1960s. Red yeah, was pretty much like it is right now, only it was quite a bit dirtier. Uh, there's a lot of things happened in the depot. Back in the day, the depot, the railroad station, was the center of all uh, communications and traffic in and out of these little cities and towns and villages. And at one time, Every village and town was served by some sort of rail service. The Depot Restoration and Museum all began with the Heart of the Heartlands Club, a Kansas-based railroad heritage organization. The museum, actually, uh, the Heart of the Heartlands as a group, was started by Dick Webb. Uh, Dick's idea after he bought the SEK Railroad in 1987 was uh, one of the things he had an idea of is getting a group of people in several different organizations all in the southeast Kansas area to prob possibly provide passenger trains and other excursions on the SEK Railroad. Uh, he gathered about eight or nine people from different organizations between Nevada and Missouri and Coffeyville, Kansas together. They had a train ride on the SEK out of Coffeyville and that was in 88, and out of that organization, 88 or 89, I'd have to pull out exactly, but out of that initial train ride, they organized a uh, steering committee to look into the idea of doing passenger train rides, and that has evolved into the organization called the Heart of the Heartlands. Uh, I attended the second meeting of the organization and have been involved as officer, board member uh, since that time. Uh, so I've been in it since its inception, basically. Heart of the Heartlands is a 501c3 tax exempt organization dedicated to preservation of our railroad history. We have about 150 members scattered across the United States. They're all rail fans, and a lot of them can't attend our meetings, but they do travel quite a bit. And we've had a lot of comments from the people, our members, saying we're amazed at what is happening out there. Every time we come through, there's something different and in the progress of being completed. The creation of this site, however, all began with one man's idea. Uh, a young man by the name of John Spawn. He, uh, saw, uh, he saw the good in it. I saw the, the work and his persistence. Uh, and Forsyth, he made all this happen. What was your reaction when John had the idea to move the depot here? Well, I thought he was crazy. I thought that, man, well, especially after he showed it to me, I thought, man, that thing's pretty close to just falling apart. It didn't have any windows in it, doors, the roof was leaking, the floor was rotted out. And uh, we got it moved here and we went to work and. Six months later, it was looking real good. I was surprised. I become involved with the railroad hobby with you, John. Ron Morgan uh, 
put him on a motor car and he went on into Pittsburgh. A week later we had our own motor car and a week after that John was on a motor car ride. And uh, I just kind of went along with him. He was really interested in uh, the railroad history and he got me and Kathy involved also. There's no real explanation for it, just some of us never got over the being like of trains from a kid. The success of the depot and the train rides the club had there inspired the idea to build a museum, which eventually resulted in the building of the Webb Family Railroad Heritage and Education Center. After our stay here, we kind of outgrew the little Corona Depot. We used to have meetings in here once a month. We'd have 30, 35 people in here, hard as it is to believe. And we started making a little extra money on our train rides, and <coughs> we decided that we would try and build us a museum, and that's how we come up with the web center across the tracks. The depot is even located on a functioning track owned by Watco. Uh, Watco is a family-run corporation based out of Pittsburgh, Kansas, started by Mr. Dick Webb in 1983. It is a uh, a transportation corporation uh, is involved in all almost all different aspects of transportation but its uh, main emphasis is rail. Watco is uh, the largest privately owned short line in North America. They have over 30 railroads, over 3,000 employees, they have port facilities in California and I think in the Gulf of Mexico they have repair facilities, car shops, engine shops, uh, switching, they're, uh, they're a railroad holding company. The track out here is the SKOL Railroad, it used to be the SEK. Lots of things happen at this little railroad stop. Well, seemingly a quaint roadside attraction, it is quite well known and loved in the community. The site currently holds train rides, which include the popular Christmas train, and, although it was cancelled last year, the pumpkin patch ride. Also, motor car expeditions and Heartland Club meetings. The site is also open for visit on weekends. Other notable things that have been transferred and restored here are the Boston Depot and the 1023 steam locomotive, which used to reside at Schlanger Park in Pittsburgh, Kansas. We'll be changing some valves here. Uh, ready just now? Yeah. Look at you and smile. While the railroad once created a considerable network of coal mining cities, the abandonment of most of the mines has left these old towns in a state of decay. Corona itself is one of the smallest towns in the area, while other towns like Scammon, McCune, and Weir have lost most of their businesses, and in some cases their schools. We have a lot of visitors come from all over the United States just visit to see the, what we have here. There's not much in southeast Kansas anymore. At one time it was quite a hotbed of uh, everything. Corona was noted for, among other things, its uh, supply of uh, illegal whiskey. Corona used to be a lot busier than it is now. It used to have a post office, a grocery store, and the very popular Gay Parita dance hall. Now the most significant things there are the depot and the Mid-America Pipe Company. This is a typical thing with Southeast Kansas towns. Corona, Roseland, Scammon, Monte Carlo, West Mineral, East Mineral, these were all coal camps. Uh, coal camp was, uh, they grew up around the mining industry, the coal mining industry. That's what brought all the immigrants into this area. Austrians, Italians, Germans, uh, Irish, they all settled here, they all dug coal, they all made a way of life, and many of them stayed here. The coal mines petered out and the businesses slowly went away and now these are unincorporated cities that are just dots on a map. However, the popularity of this museum and its historical value shows that the towns and railroads aren't going to go down just yet. Many people visit the museum, whether they're locals or people just passing through, and a lot of the train rides sell out very quickly. There is still a lingering interest in the history of the railroad. As of any organization and as any museum, it is important to uh, keep the past alive so that we can learn about what happened so we don't uh, make those same mistakes in the future. I think it's important that we preserve a way of life that is rapidly disappearing. A lot of the children come out here don't even know what a caboose is. They're really excited to get up on the old steam engine and set, ring the bell and 
just look down uh, down at the tracks like uh, it was a hundred years ago. As long as there is someone willing to learn about it, the history will always be there. As long as there is someone to catch a ride, the trains will keep going. Station. 